Oh, shit. Okay. I didn't realize it would zoom in that much. I just didn't want the mirror in the background. I'm kind of losing my voice. It's a little scratchy, so I apologize ahead of time. But welcome back, everybody. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I feel weird saying that. I don't know if other YouTube creators feel weird saying that. Like, it's at the end of my videos, but I feel like I need to say it at the beginning of my videos because I don't know if everybody watches to the end. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for me. What I wanted to talk today about... I can't talk, you guys. Not only am I losing my voice, but I can't fucking make words. I feel like dog shit. The purpose of today's video is to go over the benefits of bulking versus cutting, the different types of training you should do during each one of those to get the most benefit and the best results out of those. Without further ado, we're just gonna hop right into it. I did not make a list. We're gonna go make a list and then I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Jotted some things down really quick on a notebook so that way I don't lose track of where I'm at because if you know me, I go off on bunny trails all the time. We're gonna start off with the pros and cons of bulking. There are gonna be more pros to this. I've, I noticed there, if you think about it, there are more pros to bulking and more cons to cutting. They each serve their purpose. They each do serve their purpose. With bulking, the pros are you get better sleep. If you're not fueling your body enough or not properly, you're sleep's gonna kind of go to shit. So the more you're eating, the more you're fueling your body, more energy you have, all of this stuff, it helps for better sleep. You are actually going to go to sleep because your body is not trying to like fight to sleep. Even though like you're gonna feel exhausted if you were cutting, like you'd feel exhausted. You just, you aren't gonna have the best sleep because it's more stress on your body. That's what I was looking for. It's more stress on your body. So it's gonna give you better sleep overall because your body's gonna be less stressed because it's not having to worry about taking out all of those, the stored glycogen and all of that to kind of help fuel your body. I already said this, but more energy. You're gonna have a higher libido. Like you're just gonna be like boom, 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 boom. And I can feel the difference. I'm four weeks into my mini bulk right now. Not gonna lie, it kind of sucks. Eating that much food does suck, but at the same time, my metabolism gone through the roof. Uh, that's, that's the next point. It helps build a faster metabolism. I'm only doing about 10 to 15 minutes of walking, walking, because my job is so sedentary. I literally sit all day long so I need to get some sort of movement in. Don't walk for at least 10-15 minutes. I maybe get four to five thousand steps. Maybe about 4,500 steps a day because I work a desk job. It's very difficult for me to get my steps in in a day. So I will go and walk for about 10-15-20 minutes and that really it gets me anywhere between 8,000 to my 10,000 steps a day. It helps with a lean bowl because I'm not doing excessive cardio. Uh, the, the very first like the first three weeks of my bulk I uh, went up in weight, yes. I went up a pound in weight, but I dropped a body fat percentage. Like I went down a whole percentage, which means I was building muscle and losing fat. Even though I gained weight, it was all in muscle. Like I wasn't really complaining when I found that out. I did not do my body fat percentage this morning because I, again, was feeling like crap and was already running behind on my schedule. I stayed in bed too long. So I was like, I need to get to the store before it gets busy. So I was up, but I was like, I at least wanna weigh myself, see where I'm at. I've gone up about a pound every week in my bulk. It's about what I wanted to do. I have two more weeks. I really don't want to gain any more weight. So I'm like, oh, but I know, I know once I start my cut, like it, it's going to fall off super easy. As somebody who lost 50 pounds and like seeing the scale goes up, it, it, no, 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 like it makes my heart go, <laughs> like, it's like, I'm going the wrong way, but I'm not, I'm really not. And I needed it to boost my metabolism for when I go to cut again. So that way I'm losing more weight. Back to the bowl. You're always going to be satiated. You're hardly ever going to be hungry. And then the last pro I had on here for it was it's going to build more muscle. This kind of goes hand in hand with the faster metabolism thing. If you do it properly, if you're lean bulking, you're going to put on muscle, which is the whole point of a bulk is to put on muscle. Most, there are some people who are skinny though. They're like, I just want to put on size. Like I don't care if it's fat. I don't care if it's muscle. I just want to put it on. The, the thing is, is if you're lean bulking, you can actually eat more. If you're eating like chicken and rice, ground turkey and rice, all of this, you know, bulk still. Cutting foods, right? No, it's bulking foods as well because it's the easiest thing 
thing for your body to digest, which is going to make you hungry again to eat when you need to eat. So there goes my voice again. I eat like seven to eight eggs a day. Eggs are not bad for you. They're not bad for you. The amino acid profile in them, so good for you. Eat the whole egg, guys. Don't just do egg whites. Eat the whole fucking egg, okay? It gives you fats that you need. It gives you protein in it. It's a good protein source for your breakfast. If you start off with more protein for your breakfast, it's going to be better for you. It's gonna keep you more satiated throughout the day. It's gonna help with your blood glucose levels or like your blood sugar, blood pressure. I can't remember which one it is. It's like your blood glucose levels. I don't remember off the top of my head. I should, but I don't and I'm sorry. It helps with that. It helps keep you fuller throughout the day. It's gonna help you snack less if you're trying to lose weight. It really just depends on each individual person. If you're in a bowl, try and keep your sugar still low, your carbs high, your proteins high, fats higher. Obviously all of it's gonna go up. I tend to keep mine around the same percentage, 25% protein, 25% fat, and then 50% carbs. So now we're gonna go into the cons of bulking. If, you, if you're a gym rat, you know this. Fucking body dysmorphia. You feel fluffy as fuck. Fuck, bro. It's not, it is not fun for me. Some, uh, I can't speak for people who were skinny and are bulking. It might feel small, but either way, you still have body dysmorphia. And I feel like my body fat percentage is going up, still going up, and I'm like, no, Mariah, you can't think that way. You can't think that way because you're building muscle, you know, building up your metabolism. This is what you need in order to cut down to where I wanna be at. I'm sticking with it. 2023 is, because uh, I was thinking about coming off of my bulk a couple weeks early. No, no, we're not doing that. We're gonna stick it through till the end of January, two more weeks. So it's not quite to the end of January, 29th. February, I'm gonna be like at a maintenance for majority of it. Body dysmorphia, anyway, we're going back. What, am <laughs> my brain is just like over here, guys. It's just like off in the distance and like I keep getting sidetracked. Okay, body dysmorphia is a bitch. Another thing that is a con for some people, especially for me, is the higher body fat percentage. Yeah, you're putting on weight, some of it might be, you know, some of it's gonna be fat. Some people need to put fat on their body though. Like some of you are too skinny and you need to add some fat. Like don't, like if you're skinny, don't be afraid to eat. Please just don't be afraid to eat for people like me who have always been a little thicker. That higher body fat percentage number is gonna get you sometimes. And I'm still within a healthy body fat percentage. It's just not where I want it to be. I'm trying to get it down. And then this one just kind of goes hand in hand with it. You're just uncomfortable in your body. Like all of those just tie in together. You can just be uncomfortable in your body. And there are some people People who, you know, if they're on the skinnier side and they're like, I need to put on size and muscle and blah, blah, blah. Like I just, I need to put on weight. They're just constantly in a bowl and then their metabolism just kind of crashes. So this is another con to it. And you need to interrupt it with little spurts. So if you've been in a bowl for like 12 weeks, you need to interrupt it with a cut basically, or go to your maintenance, go into a, a small mini cut and then build your calories back up. Another thing that is recommended to do is if you're in a bulk and you want to stay in it for quite a while do like little mini bulks in between every like three weeks just do like a three-day cut and then put your calories back up that way it, it helps your metabolism to keep going and help you put on weight versus just kind of plateauing out and you don't have to keep adding calories because once you get up to like a certain amount of calories it's super hard to like eat it, it can be super hard like you dreaming you dreaming baby you having a bad dream <laughs> Is you okay, baby? You wanna sleep? Okay, I guess he's gonna stay here for a little bit. Now I'm gonna switch over to, uh, do I switch over to cutting or do I switch over to training? Mm, no, I'll do all the training parts together. We'll switch over to cutting. Pros of cutting. I'm gonna put you down. No bad dreams for you. Pros for cutting. You'll lose weight. That's a pro, as long as you're not too skinny. I feel like I keep saying that in like a bad thing, but like if you don't have a lot of weight to you, like it, that's a bad thing, it's to lose weight. And I'm not trying to be like negative Nancy to like people who are skinny. It's not the intention of this. Sometimes I wish I was you, that I needed to put on size. But losing weight, you know, for people like me, it, it can help with, I've lost 50 pounds and I've never felt more healthy in my life, even though my voice might not sound like it. I know that I still have a little ways to go. I still want to lose about 20 pounds looking shredded. This makes people think of bodybuilders, right? Yeah, because they always look shredded AF when they're on stage or getting close to stage. That's too lean, okay? That's too lean. But you can still get shredded and have a good body fat percentage, see abs and like all this other stuff in a healthy mindset. 
you can have all of that. Now, I'm not saying that I not I haven't considered bodybuilding. I have. But every time I consider it and then I'm around people who power lift, remind me so much of why I love power lifting. I love power lifting so much. So fun. And I am currently in a bodybuilder program and I hate it so much. I don't know that I can do bodybuilding. Y'all look shredded AF and I'm jealous. Uh, this one I kind of already said. It can get you to a healthy body fat percentage. Being in a cut, a caloric deficit, it's all the same thing. Basically your body is burning more calories than you are intaking. You do it in the right way where you're still giving your body enough nutrients. You're walking enough. You're getting in enough steps. You're doing a little bit of cardio, not too much. You can get to a healthy body fat percentage and do it in a healthy way for your body. It does not have to be, oh my gosh, I'm going to go do the Stairmaster for an hour. That's fucking bodybuilder shit. And they're still not doing that in a healthy way. I don't know how people can do it that long. I can't even do the Stairmaster for two minutes. I, I don't know how people can do it because one, the steps either go too fast or they go too slow and, and I'm bored. Or if they go too fast, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm gonna fall on my fucking face. And like, I, I can't do it. Let me walk, just let me go walk. I will walk way more than doing that. Just let me get extra steps in. But you can do like, you can do like 10 minutes on the Stairmaster and that's not gonna be bad for you. If if you can, more power to you if you can, because I fucking can. Cons to cutting, low libido, low energy. You don't don't have as much energy and en en energy energy <laughs> to do shit. It makes it very difficult for you to go through really do anything. You you just got enough energy to get you through the day. That's that's all I can say. You got enough energy to get you through the day. Another con, you're always hungry. Okay? You're always hungry. I personally, when I'm cutting, I like to do smaller meals, but more frequently, it's like a couple hundred calories here, a couple there, a couple there. I'm constantly eating and I don't feel like I'm always as hungry. Little pro tip for you there. Don't ask me why I sound southern country i don't know moody you can get moody because you ain't got the nerve to mess with some people and so it's just like you're sometimes you're just on a fuse it's just like don't fucking speak to me like leave me the fuck alone less sleep this one i kind of already talked about because you have higher stress on the body you're not going to be able to sleep as well when you're cutting and then body dysmorphia again we all we all know body dysmorphia is a bitch some people you know if they started off little and they're cutting they're they're gonna feel small i highly recommend taking progress pictures same day fasted first thing when you wake up in the morning basically i do mine on saturdays i don't go out on fridays because i don't get off of work till six and i like to be in bed and get up early on saturdays i will do it first thing in the morning on Saturdays. I'll weigh myself. Same time. If I do it, I'll take a progress picture. I haven't been doing it on a bulk, you know. Okay, so now we're going to get into the training aspect of it. What styles of training are the best on a bulk versus a cut on what one might be good for both? Typically in a bulking phase, you're going to want to do, you're going to have more energy. So this is a good time to take advantage of lifting heavier weights for lower reps or something more of like a power lifting style because you're going to have the energy to actually move it. I hit a PR a couple weeks ago on my squat and my deadlift. But now my deadlift is like suffering even though I'm in a bulk. It, it's kind of shit. But I'm also doing that bodybuilding style so it's a higher rep range than what I'm used to. So I have to do a lower weight and like it's really kind of mind fucking me right now. The power lifting aspect of it is I've been doing that for almost a year so I was like I can't do that. But the majority of the time you want to do a power lifting thing. The lower reps, higher weight and it's what's really gonna, I'm not gonna say it, what, it's what really helps put on muscle. If you don't typically do it, it's a good thing for you to do because it's going to be a new stimulant for you. Any style of training is going to be good for you. Whatever you do, a program that is a program that you hate and you're inconsistent with is less likely to have, it's not going to have as good enough of, as of an effect as one that you're consistent with and you like. It just depends. I personally want to see more gains. I'm forcing myself to do this other style of training because I want to up my lifts. Can't be in the lower because I basically just maxed out on my lifts. So I have to start over again and build up more strength. So I'm doing a different style of training to kind of help with that. Like the powerlifting style is better in a bulk, whereas bodybuilding is better in a cut. Lower weights, higher reps. For me, it's like fucking doing cardio with weights. I know that's CrossFit. I know that's more CrossFit. Holy fucking shit. It kills me, man. I'll be sweating by like my second set. My sweatshirt's coming off. I have to take my shirt off half the time. I'm like sweating my 
ass off because I feel like I'm doing cardio with weights because I'm not used to it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how people do it. I'm also, so I'm doing one that's very, very different than what I'm used to. The program starts off at the more of like a powerlifting range. So I have to start, so they have phase one, phase two, and phase three, but you can do it backwards. So if you're used to doing the powerlifting, they suggest you start in phase three, which is all supersets, all supersets. <gasps> four, four things of supersets. I'm doing four sets of each. The first one is eight to 12 reps. And then the second part of the superset is 10 to 15 reps. And I'm, I die. I feel like I'm physically dying. It is a lot of volume. Yeah. Now, another thing you can do in either one is hypertrophy training. So that's your eight to 10 rep range at a moderate weight. You know, a weight that's not too difficult, a weight that's not too light in your eight to 10 rep range. And you typically do it for like three, maybe four sets, just really depends. But you can do that either in a bulk or in a cut. It really doesn't matter. That's one that you can kind of hover around a little bit longer. You want to try and get into the lower rep ranges and the higher rep ranges to stimulate new growth. I know hypertrophy is known as the growth stage, but if you're in there all the time, going to failure, you don't go to failure or go close to failure on that. It's supposed to be a moderate weight. Start off at one that you can do eight reps with and have a couple extra reps in the tank, maybe get to, you know, the 10, maybe 12. Work your way up to the 10 and where you could get up to 12, 15 reps on it. And then up the weight, go to the next one, start all over again. That's progressive overload. Do that with your hypertrophy training. Always doing hypertrophy and you want a new stimulus, you want your muscles to grow, which I'm assuming you do if you're in the gym. Not, and now, if you're just there to kind of stay fit, be healthy, then more power to you. Do the hypertrophy training. But if you're really wanting to build and grow your muscles, you want to go into the lower rep ranges and the higher rep ranges. Yeah, um, that's really all I got for today. That was a lot of information. I hope it all made sense to you. If you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or message me on Instagram, anything like that. I also have my TikTok on there. I think my TikTok messages are open too. So if you don't have Instagram, message me on TikTok and we'll see what we can do. Figure out. I would be more than happy to kind of help explain it to you if you still have any questions after this. That's all I have for you guys. So until next time, have a good week, three day weekend. Whoop, whoop. I'm so excited for that. Um, yeah. Have a good weekend, you guys. I just realized I said weekend and I meant week. Have a good week, you guys. I see like this little square and it's just trying to focus on my eyes. And uh, it's really weird. It's really kind of creeping me out.